What's happening ladies and gentlemen? My name is Tyler from Ty Drives and sitting in front of us is the all new and absolutely beautiful 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo. And this one just so happens to be in the Trofeo trim. So we have the absolutely performance oriented trim of the Gran Turismo to check out today. And in an absolutely stunning specification we have the matte gray on the exterior and the red on the interior. So very beautiful, loaded up vehicle for us to take a look at. A couple of packages has the ATIS package 2, the comfort package, tech assistance package, sport design package, and we also have the carbon twill in the inside, as well as the beautiful 20 and 21 inch Astero glossy dark uh, painted wheels. And of course the matte black paint color comes in at a little bit of an extra cost. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at all of the features this vehicle has to offer, starting on the exterior, working our way under the hood, checking out the new powertrains. We'll then check out the trunk and finally hop into the interior. So we're really gonna get a good um, look at this vehicle and really dive into all the features this vehicle has to offer. Absolutely gorgeous vehicle, by the way. Starting up out front, we have the full LED headlamps, so the high and low beams, as well as the daytime lights and the turn signals are all powered by LED units. We can see we have a very nice, classy and subtle amount of carbon fiber trim on this vehicle. So classy is the key word for this Gran Turismo. We have some carbon accents going around the uh, side uh, intakes. We can see the intercooler in there to keep that twin turbocharged V6 cool. And then we also have our main grille that has the active aero shutters inside. We have the nice big Maserati emblem, even a camera at the top of the grille and our parking sensors are adorning the front bumper. We also have the Maserati emblem on the top of the bumper too. And take a look at that matte gray paint color on the hood. Beautiful, very long and bulging hood. It's almost a clamshell design. Well, it kind of is a clamshell design. Um, being in the fact that a hood goes over the wheel, uh, the wheels themselves. So we'll see when we have the hood open, it's a very large opening. Taking a look down here to the wheels. Of, of course, we have a staggered setup. So up front, we have 20 inch wheels and those are wrapped in 255 30 tires. Absolutely gorgeous wheel setup. We have the kind of painted gray pockets and machine um, face to the wheels. Nice, large, uh, ventilated uh, rotors and very large um, red accented brake calipers. Also have a red accented Trofeo badge right on the top, on the bottom of the hood, I should say, and our typical um, three air vents for the fenders. Now, one more thing I wanted to point out on the hood too is take a look at these very subtle heat extraction vents on the hood. So that's a pretty cool feature. We have gloss black adorning the bottom of the mirrors and all the way around the windows as well. As you can see, the mirrors are actually folded in right now, so they are power folding. You have blind spot warning on the mirrors, cameras at the bottom, and the um, turn signals on them as well. Nice aerodynamic solution to the door handles, so we kind of just reach underneath the black uh, accented pocket, and there is a little um, rubber pad there and you could kind of tap on it as electronic release and in case you want to lock the vehicle there's a little rib pattern right here so you just put your finger there and it will lock the vehicle nicely accented red uh, Maserati Trident and we have the fuel filler on the driver's side and back here are the 21 inch rims so the fronts have 20 inch the rear have 21s and the rear tire size is 295.30, so a little bit larger tires back here too. We have full LED brake lamps, just like out, out front. Um, so we have the turn signals, brake lights, and tail lights are all powered by LED units. And again, back here, very subtle and classy amount of carbon fiber. So right over here next to the exhaust, you have these little fins that protrude from the rear bumper and they are carbon fiber. You have parking sensors all the way around the rear bumper, beautiful chrome accented exhaust tips, 
and a little bit of gloss black with the Maserati emblem spelled out. Just below the S in Maserati is your reversing camera, and right below the R is the trunk release. We also have the Gran Turismo badging back here, which is gorgeous. And that pretty much rounds out the exterior. Definitely an evolutionary design, but one that is much needed since the Gran Turismo, the previous Gran Turismo was out for a very long time. But an absolutely gorgeous evolutionary change to the Gran Turismo. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, so onto the hood of the new Gran Turismo is two different twin turbo V6 options. So with the Modena trim, which is more of the luxury focused trim, it is a 3 liter twin turbocharged V6, 483 horsepower, 361 pound feet of torque. But under the hood of this monster, which is the Trofeo, we have the same 3 liter twin turbocharged V6, but it's tuned up to 542 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque. Now, both models will come hooked up with an 8 speed ZF automatic transmission and all wheel drive. Okay, so we'll take a quick peek at the trunk. Not a whole lot going on back here, but it is worth pointing out that it is a power trunk lid, so that is pretty nice. Uh, pretty good amount of space back here, nicely carpeted, and underneath the floor you have all of your tire inflation uh, and tools back here, and then you also have a 12 volt power outlet. It is illuminated towards the top, and you can also see that there's a pass-through um, from in the middle of the uh, two rear seats, but that pretty much does it for back here. We have two buttons to close one to lock and close and one to simply just close Okay, so now that we have the driver's door open we can go over some of the features on it Looks very simplistic not a lot of buttons going on, but there is a lot of really nice materials all the way up here is beautifully lapped and wrapped in black leather, I should say, and all the way down here too. So very, very nice use of materials. And the central portion is the red leather color. You have red stitching on here as well as up here. Nice amount of a metallic accents too for the strip up top. And a couple of different speakers on the door for the Sonos Faber audio system. Nice piece of carbon fiber too that adorns the top piece. Now we have a couple of buttons on the door, this one to release the door from the inside. And then we also have a little handle down below in case the battery dies while you're in the car. You can pull that and that is a mechanical release for the door. So just kind of a, um, just kind of a second hand um, option in case. Up here we have a couple of buttons that light up when you start the car. We have the lock unlock as well as the uh, window controls and all of your power mirrors adjustments as well. Pretty cool little thing on the side right here is the uh, Maserati since 1914 logo. And we also have the sill plate that says Maserati as well. Now we're gonna focus on the rear seats for right now. All you have to do to gain access is lift up and the seat will scoot forward automatically for you. And once you get back there, it's actually a pretty nice place to be. You definitely feel nice and cozy. Um, everything is adorned very, very nicely uh, with leather and all of the same trim work and whatnot. So once you're back here, you have an air vent, a couple of cup holders, and some charging options too. So you have a regular USB and a USB-C. Definitely very cozy seats back here. And if you have the front seats in a more normal position, I think you could definitely fit two people back here pretty comfortably. We have some speakers back here too and a full Alcantara headliner, some very nice headrests and this little portion right here where you can pull out and that becomes your pass through.
Okay, so now that we have the front seats back into place, take a look at how beautifully designed they are. Almost all red on this seat, so we have the same color stitching, and they are fully powered. So you have your lumbar, all of your regular seat adjustments, and the thigh extensions as well. One more thing I'd really like to point out is the quality of the carpets on this vehicle is beautiful. And take a look at those pedals. On the left of the dash, we have the parking brake right here. And underneath, we have the, um, the adjustment for the power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Alrighty, so here's the key fob for the Gran Turismo. Very nice new Maserati key with the leather accents on the back and on the front with the buttons. We have the lock, unlock, trunk release, and the panic alarm. Then you also have a physical key on the inside in case you need to use that. But the push button start is right here on the steering wheel, accented in blue. And we have that beautiful V6 roar to life. Give us a nice little sound upon startup too. So, we'll take a look at the steering wheel here. So we have a completely leather wrapped steering wheel with the nice accents on the side. Nice amount of grip for the bolsters as well. And some pretty cool looking uh, um, aluminum shift paddles on the steering column. A couple of buttons on the steering wheel to go through. All of these right here have to do with the digital gauges. And then we also have Bluetooth telephone controls and voice commands. We of course have the push button start right here. Moving across the airbag cover, we have all of your adaptive cruise control settings and also your lane, lane centering and uh, um, different things of that nature. A couple of driving modes with the button on the steering wheel as well, so we can cycle between four different modes. We have Comfort, Grand Touring, Sport, and Corsa. So for the time being, we're going to leave it in into that comfort mode and we'll go through all of the different settings that you can see on the screen in the center. But before we do that, on the back of the steering wheel we have a couple of stocks used for your high beams, turn signals, and there's also a button at the end to shut off your lane keeping assist. And on the other side we have our wipers. Now one more thing I forgot to mention, kind of out of sight, out of mind, is the buttons on the back of the steering wheel. So on this side you can raise and lower the audio volume. And to the other side, you can um, change between your different presets. So we'll kind of go through all of the features that this digital gauge cluster has to offer. Very nice, elegant setup for the comfort mode. And we can start adjusting by pressing this little page button here. Now we can pull up different things on this side. Um, we can also uh, get different, different layouts. So we have a classic, uh, a kind of evolved as well as a relaxed setup for the gauges. Now you can also pull up the recent calls for your um, Bluetooth telephone and whatnot, and also have a couple of adjustments there for the hazard display. Uh, but we can also get different information too on this side too, so what kind of music is playing, a G4 speeder, exterior temperature and time, and also um, your tire pressures. So once we start twisting the drive mode selector, you can see that the um, gauges start to change. So once we go back into our gauge setup here and we go to our cluster layout, change it back to classic. We can see that our speedometer has changed and then also once we go down into Corsa as well, it changes again. So pretty cool uh, large tachometer, digital speedometer with the gear that you're in as well as your turbo pressure, real-time torque, and oil pressure. So very neat screen there uh, for the Corsa mode. Taking a look at the upper dash, we have nice uh, soft leather with the red stitching. And we also have the heads-up display that displays your uh, digital speedometer as well as the navigation. And if you have it in the Sport or Corsa mode, it will also display um, some various performance gauges. That is pretty neat. Right here is our digital clock, which I will start adjusting in just a minute once we get down to the lower screen. But the upper screen is very nice, easy to use, and intuitive. We have this kind of double screen uh, display, which has to do with your mainly multimedia up here and mainly climate control down here. So we'll kind of go through a couple of different things. Right here we have an adjustable home screen, so we can kind of display what you want here. And then we can also add different widgets if we scroll over in different pages. We can also swipe from the top to get various different information uh, to, to 
get quickly. You know, turn on and off your wireless charger, your surround view camera, and things of that nature. We can go down to media, which has to do with the um, the different radio stations. You can just select your source right there. Um, also, what's playing, so that'll pull up your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, also your Sirius XM, AM, FM, all that good stuff, and you also have your audio settings. Right here is your navigation, so you can kind of put in uh, where you want to go right up top there, and then this is your map. And we also have the phone screen, a very nice vehicle screen with lots and lots of adjustments. Um, we kind of have a My Car screen right here, which has to do with your maintenance and things of that nature. We have your tire pressure, oil life, and the drive mode explorer, which is a pretty cool thing. It kind of gives you this little graph right here, and once you start selecting modes, it will kind of adjust to um, what uh, that specific mode is intended to do. We have a performance screen right here, which is really cool, with a couple of different gauges. Consumption uh, torque management between the front wheels and rear wheels for the all-wheel drive system. And then also a really neat sort of drag racing mode, so you can actually time yourself 0 to 60 timers, 0 to 100 timers, 8th mile, quarter mile, and also braking distances, so that is really cool. Then we have another set of gauges right here for the oil, transmission, temperature, and the battery voltage. Over here we have a couple of different controls which are very clearly laid out. And then we have a ton of settings. So lots and lots of settings to go through with this vehicle. Not going to go through them all because it would take a very long time. Uh, but that is there for that. And then we have a jumbulation of all your different apps. So pretty, very nice screen to get used to. Uh, super easy. Lots of different things in there. Uh, but again, very easy to get used to. All of your shortcuts are right to the side there too. Now right below the screen we have a little array of buttons which is kind of hard to see with the glare uh, but that is actually your uh, transmission lever solution. So we have the park, reverse, and if you put it into reverse we have the reversing camera and the side cameras. A couple of different adjustments for both the front and rear so we have a rear uh, regular angle and wide angle as well as the front and uh, front wide angle. We have neutral and drive at the end right over here. Once you tap drive again, it'll put you into the manual mode. We have our uh, hazards right over here. And a bunch of different controls. Again, this is mainly used for your climate control. Over here we have a slider for your volume and a mute button. So everything to do with climate control is mainly in the center. So we have our temperatures to either side. We also have our heated seats and cool seats as well as our heated steering wheel. We can tap in the center to select where the air comes out and then we have a fan speed in the center as well. Everything else to do with climate control is basically your front and rear defrosters down here. Automatic and then you're just kind of recycling for the air. We can sync the temperatures, uh, turn it off as well as your uh, kind of automatic and AC adjustments up here. Everything else is kind of different. So we have a couple of buttons down the bottom to turn on and off your parking sensors as well as your auto start stop. We can also manually raise and lower the air suspension, turn the on and off the ESC, and also open up your glove box. So pretty good amount of space in there with all felt lined. A couple of buttons over here to adjust your clock. So we can adjust it to a normal clock, bring it down to a compass, uh, get a kind of pedal outlook there, see with our brake and the acceleration as well as a g-force meter so very cool implementation of the clock right there and we can adjust it a couple of different ways into the uh, classic sport or design um, settings there so i think the sport looks actually looks pretty cool we can get out of there and go into our lighting adjustments so as you saw before there is really no physical button for your headlights so you can turn them on right over here Basically all you need to do is just press the auto button, but if you ever wanted to manually turn on your headlights, right there is the button for it. We can also adjust the seats too, so we have our three memory settings for both the driver and the passenger. And we can just kind of toggle like that to adjust each seat. Right down here is your adjustment for the thigh extension, so on the bottom there. We can also adjust the lower and upper bolsters, and that again is for both front seats. Then we also have a devoted uh, tab right here for the ambient lighting. So we have a bunch of different themes right here and you can also adjust the brightness. So very nice intuitive uh, solution with the double screens right up here. 
Right below the lower screen is a wireless charging pad, and then you have a nice bit of carbon fiber with a little bit of storage right here, and your cup holders. Nice, beautiful leather with some stitching on your um, armrest. With a couple of different USBs and a 12 volt power outlet in there. And of course you saw the glove box already. Beautiful um, passenger side to the dashboard. We even have the Italian flag right there and the Gran Turismo logo. Very nice air vents too. And again, all stitched dash um, that is leather wrapped. Again, all Alcantara, nice high ceiling. So there's quite a bit of headroom in this vehicle too. Uh, we can also fold down these visors. You can see you have a little mirror and light. Up here, a couple of different adjustments for lighting. You can also pop the trunk from up here. Um, some more lighting controls and emergency buttons up here too. Now the rear view mirror is auto dimming, but it is also a digital mirror. So take a look at that. You just fold it like kind of like the old uh, day and night mode mirrors. You just fold it back and that becomes your um, camera mirror. So we have a couple adjustments there for that. And we also have garage door openers on the driver's visor. So that pretty much does it for all of the features of the all new and very, very impressive 2024 Maserati Gran Turismo Trofeo that is. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I also hope you stay with us here at Tide Drives for more videos just like this one in the future.